Hi, I'm Adam van Ikerk. I'm a, a PhD student in biomedical engineering, I'm working with MRI scanners, and I'm trying to correct for motion uh, using an orientation tracking device. Quite hard. It's like a almost like a camera gimbal uh, for an MRI scanner in some way. So an MRI scan is like a, a video camera with a, or a camera with a very long exposure time and what I'm doing is technically taking this camera and following the subject as they move within the MRI scanner. Yeah, every time someone moves in an MRI scanner the, the image gets blurred, right? So just like I said before it's like a camera with a long exposure time and uh, what I noticed is that there's a very efficient way of measuring this orientation in the scanner that is very different from everything that's been done before. So it overcomes a lot of challenges with existing techniques in which they need to physically see something on the patient. Um, the, with this marker as like a or device, uh, you don't actually need to mount it in, in line of sight and you don't need expensive hardware. So. So it's much cheaper than anything that's existed before, which makes it you know, easier to use for small research groups like, like ours. And it actually could have applications in clinical MRI. Quite a large amount of uh, images taken are corrupted by motion in some way. I mean, at Cubic UCT, our MRI scanner, we uh, do a lot of studies on, on, on children and all the elderly and in an MRI scanner you've got to lie very, very still for, for a long amount of time. So, so this is basically trying to prevent that challenge. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's kind of a, 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 a strange story. Um, my supervisor had proposed a, a different project for me and uh, she asked me to do uh, a literature review and in doing the literature review I just noticed that um, a lot of people claimed real-time motion correction in the MRI scanner but they were actually updating the position really really slowly and I just identified that it could actually be done in a much easier way and I kept just writing about the wrong stuff and finally um, she was just like, Adam, you can, you can do what you want, even though it's a little bit high risk, but it, it might work. Well, I, I, I just really, I would love, I don't know, it's, I'm a massive engine nerd. I, I grew up, um, I mean, I've got a wind tunnel in the back garden at home with my dad. Um, and I, I've always just loved electronics um, and maths and stuff and and actually um, making things work I don't know it's uh, I don't like theoretical stuff as much I like to make things and, and see and see them work and uh, MRI is really great in that way and that you can make something and see how it affects things right away So making electronics for an MRI scanner is actually really difficult. Um, there's a lot of, it's not the most, it's quite a hostile environment for anything electronic. Um, so I had to source components from all over the world and I was just kind of a small guy bugging these pretty big companies. So an example is the magnetometer I used. I had to Skype some, a Swiss company um, for almost every day of a week, just bug them each day and also trying to get them to drop their price for me to get this, this sensor I needed. 
and luckily they gave in finally and, and sold it to me. So tell me the magnetometer is the other invention, right? So not what? this specific, but this specific invention. No, no, the magnetometer is one of the sensors I use that. So what we have another invention called the magnetometer. So I was just yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we have our own one. <laughs> Maybe I can use his. Yeah, yeah that'll the that'll help me. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, what do you anticipate looking to the future with regards to your in invention? So, uh, I guess, you know, I, I want it to be used in, in clinical MRI. Um, and the way MRI is going at the moment, uh, they're pushing for higher and higher image resolution. And what started happening now is um, involuntary motion is starting to blur images. So, your breathing and your pulse actually causes some artifacts in these really high resolution images. So it's the limit of image clarity is now hampered by involuntary motion. So that's not even for children or the elderly who struggle to lie still, it's for, for everyone. So, so it could technically be used in every MRI scan, hopefully one day. Well, with, any, with anything, there's um, a lot of different ways to have done things, but I was very fortunate to have my first prototype work a lot better than I expected, or I guess even Anesta expected, but um, it worked really well, and uh, I mean, you, you never, I mean, you learn from your mistakes, and uh, I guess um, now I don't have to make them again in future, so I guess I, I wouldn't say I don't, yeah, it was... So it's, it's a device comprised of the sensors you find in your smartphone that let you tell how tilted it is. But I combine this with um, uh, measurements from a very special magnetometer, and what this allows me to do is track orientation within an MRI scanner to a precision way higher than what's conventionally possible with those very cheap sensors. Um, and it actually really works out well because I'm using gravity and the MRI scanner's static magnetic field. And you can see these from anywhere in the scanner and they're actually quite reliable. You know, gravity is always going to be there and the static magnetic field is always going to be there. So once you've calibrated this device or, or used it for the first time, it, you never need to change anything with it. It's so easy to use and um, you can mount it anywhere on the subject and it's got no limited um, range in measurements. So it's, it's just overcomes a lot of challenges with existing motion correction techniques. I'd say make things. I think um, it's easy to talk to your friends about um, your great new idea and stuff, but um, whenever you make something, you realize there's 300 more problems that you have to actually deal with. And it's very easy to come up with the next big thing, but um, actually making it, you know, you gotta start somewhere. I mean, start with something easy, I guess, but yeah, just make stuff. So.